So I have this thing, a CD player. Now, there are lots of these things kicking around. Actually, this one's a DVD player. Uh, what I'd like to do, actually, is to turn this into an air engine. So let's get it to pieces. Okay, it's dead easy to get it open. There are four screws holding it on. Take those four screws off, pull the front bezel off, and then this back case will open up just by a, a sharp tug, actually. And that's the bit we're after. That's the actual CD DVD motor. And you can see the little runners there and the motor's held in there. So we need to get that out. When the DVD was in one piece, you had this front bezel on it. You'll notice there's a little hole there. When you look behind that little hole, there's a plastic and that removes that. So if you look here, you'll see a gear train. That gear train is a bit that rises the DVD up and down and forces the carriage in and out. And it's connected actually to a little DC motor. So there's a little gear train and motor there, which are lovely. When we look back here, there were two screws in here. Undo those two screws and that whole train drive will just pluck out. So here is the main carriage and here we have another drive motor with the helical screw, that's the in and out, and here we have the motor mount that we're looking for which is the uh, DVD CD drive motor and it's held on by three Torx screws so you're going to need a little screw, screw, uh, Torx screwdriver to be able to undo that. So undo those screws and you'll be able to pick the motor straight out. Here on the slide guides it has another set of screws and we can just get that out that will give you a very nice bit of rod actually. Same thing on this side, we've got a nice little bit of bar there. There is the laser mechanism itself, just sitting there rather nicely. And then we have this last motor here on its driver that we can undo those screws for and take that motor out and that motor also is mounted quite nicely. So now we have the motor we have to connect to it. Now you're never going to be able to connect to them. It's really quite difficult. So the thing to do is take it to pieces. Now this is only a push fit so you prise it off. Prise it off gently. It'll come off in one of two ways. Either this top one will come off by itself leaving you the spindle in or the whole spindle will come out. When you've done that that will actually just take, come off really, really easily. And that's obviously the magnet. And here we've got the rotor. And now you can see the connection points that are actually large enough for us to be able to connect to. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. This one has three connections. Okay, so I've soldered three wires onto those three contact points. Like I say, if you have four contact points, solder four wires on. Now, basically, you can't have a big lump sitting there because you're going to put that back on. So if you've got a big lump, you're going to have to file it down, cut it down with a knife, re-solder it, so that the lump that you've got for the solder connection was actually the same size as the, it was before. Otherwise, you won't get that back on. So there will be two ways that these are wired. I was kind of lucky in that mine was wired a bit like a PC fan. So what that means is, around all those poles you saw, if I can take that back off, there we go. So around all these poles are basically two coils, and those coils come like that. And the other coil is done like that. So these two are joined together, and that's why we see three points. One of those points has two wires together coming out and it's the midpoint of the coil. The other, the two ends of the coils, and it's the two ends that you want, it's not the midpoint. If you do the midpoint, you'll get half the output. So you'll still get output, it'll just be half the output. If you've identified the two ends of the coils, you get the full output that it can possibly give you. And that's why we have three on here. Now it's dead simple to find it, because if you measure between here and here, you'll get some resistance value. You get the same one if you measure here and here, they'll be roughly the same. If you measure here and here, the resistance will be twice. Equally, you can do what I've done, which is just connect the whole thing up and give it a spin and see which one gives you the highest output. In my case, you can see the two. These two wires give me the highest output, meaning that wire is in fact that central wire. So I don't need that one, I can just remove it and that's what I'll do. Okay, so another way that you'll see these is where you have four points on here. Now, if it's four points, it's either in this way, where you have three coils connected. And this will be point one, two, three, and that centre one is the point four that we're talking about. If you get one like that, then you need to pull these three wires off and do it as if it were three phase. That's pretty easy to do actually, you just put a three phase rectifier on there. The other way you'll sometimes see it is where you have three which are wired like that and again one, two, three, three phase on it. 
I'm lucky in that I got that. Okay, so I've just fixed it to a bit of builder's board to make it stable and glued the wires down to keep them out of the way. What I've got here are a couple of CDs glued together, but I've laminated them against a bit of roofer's lead just to give that a bit of weight, because that's a flywheel. You could just use three CDs together, it'll do the same job. We pop that on there, we now have a flywheel, so if I spin that, then we can get some output from that. Okay, so there it is, all glued up with its flywheel on, connected to the multimeter. Obviously, it's reading uh, current in AC, and we give that a spin. We get 15, 16 milliamps out of it, no problem at all. There you go. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. Of course, you're not going to stop with something like that there. So what I've done is I've just built a very simple air engine, actually. I'm using a syringe as a piston. I've put it on a pivot and I've put a little link on it. And on our flywheel, all I've done is dr uh, stick a nail through it. So that has a nail there glued into the flywheel. Then I put a bit of aluminium on it to stop this dropping down. And the syringe is basically just a syringe where I've sanded the rubber so that it's a loose fit. And I've stuck a bit of wire in there with a loop in it where the loop fits on there like that. You notice the syringe has this little bit of wire here going into another piece of aluminium tube, which will be the pivot. So that can pivot backwards and forwards on there. That can go in and out there and attaches to there. And so that's our air engine to drive our little CD DVD ROM drive. Blast a bit of air in there, that should go spinning. Okay, I've attached up the meter and you can see it reading here. There's our little air engine and I'm going to run that air engine with a can of compressed air. So I'm just going to punch some compressed air at that, turn it on and see what we get. Okay, for me, that was awesome. I mean, it's not the br most brilliant of air engines. It's just a really simple oscillating engine. Uh, we got a few revs out of it and it did about 20 milliamps, something like that. But I think as proof of concept, can it be done? Awesome stuff, it can be done. What I'd like to do next really, I think, is build a better air engine so that we can get a higher number of revs out of that and see what we can get when it's actually all a bit more sealed up and running. But anything that's gonna turn that flywheel obviously is going to generate. But I thought I would share that with you because I thought it was quite a cool project actually. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.